um, I can't see nothing without my glasses. So um, we, if you have not gotten your book, Praying from the Third Dimension, we are on page 15. And if you order your book today, you will receive the PDF of the book today. So you can follow us by computer until you get your book sent out to you physically. And um, also for those of you who are interested, um, the signature series, uh, I want to let you know that we did close to 100 books on yesterday. We're only doing 500 of this signature series. So when the next set of books comes out, um, it will not have my signature in gold right here. And it will not have my picture on the front and um, the special write up that I'm doing on the inside. So this particular one, the first 500 is called the signature series. And after 500, they will be dated and numbered. So you will have number two out of 500. You would have number 233 out of 500. And this will not go in print again. So after this 500, we're going to um, take the picture off the front and there would be a smaller picture of me in the corner on the back. It will not be a gold signed uh, signature series book and the picture will not be on the front. So if you are interested in having this collector's item, because that's what it will be, um, eventually uh, they would be hard to come by and and you would be somebody for having one. Um, and so I'm going, I'm only going to do 500 of them. And so I don't want you to procrastinate and say, well, I'll just get it later because that was pretty quick, uh, for me, that was a pretty quick turnout of people that ordered the topical Bible. Um, and it is the, the topical Bible. Let me explain it to you. It will be, um, every subject that is in the Bible. So if you look up the word pain, It'll start maybe hypothetically on page 65 and it, all the scriptures that's in the Bible under the topic pain will be listed from maybe page 65 to maybe page 68, however many scriptures. So you will no longer have to look up a subject and then go to your Bible and try to find it. Every scripture that pertains to wealth, every scripture that pertains to pain, every scripture that pertains to joy will be right at your fingertips under the word pain. And so people walk around with it and it's a topical Bible. Great tool to have when you are out and at work and don't want to carry uh, your regular Bible with you that contains the Old Testament and uh, you just want to get to a subject matter that, is, that you are dealing with. That's what the topical Bible is all about. And so you can get your signature series to debt. And that's going to be a blessing to you. Um, I want to uh, remind you that um, it is it is a blessing for us to tag people. You, you, you don't know the comments that I go back and read where people say um, somebody tagged me in this post and tagged me on this video. And I didn't even know anything about you. I didn't. I've never heard of you before. And, and somebody tagged me and I said, well, who is this lady? And um, the person said, and I have not stopped watching ever since. They said, um, many people, many people, literally you all, many people. And they have said, I stopped putting down, I just put down everything. And I started giving away stuff and start, you know, I just stopped all that partying and, and acting all wild. And your teachings have changed my life. And so I say to that, to God be the glory for all that he has done. And I thank you for all of you all that were uh, divinely obedient and went and voted for um, Emanuela at the Stellars. If you did not, um, a video of why I chose to support her is down there. And, um, you know, God is doing some great things and we got some other great things coming up. Um, I got an inbox from one of my little sisters on this page, um, Sister Ebony. And so we're planning to be one of the guest speakers for her um, uh, women's uh, gathering, her entrepreneurship gathering. I was very humble and very honored to accept the invitation. So you're going to be seeing more advertisement about that coming up um, in the early part of next year. Well, later, latter part of January is going to be around the 27th of January. But anyway, God is good. And so, like I said, you know, you, you, you show me a wagon going up. And, you know, and I'll pray about it 
And I'll be the first one to try to do whatever I can, if I could do anything, to be a blessing. But I don't have time for whiners. I, I, I don't have time for victims. That's just not on my calendar. I can't fit you in. You know, I'd be trying to fit you in somewhere, but I, I just can't fit them whiners in. I, I can't fit the victims in. You know, I, I, I only got space on my calendar and space in my life for people who have decided to leave the past behind, knowing that I must complete this experience. And when I have completed this experience, God is going to make me an author and he's going to make me a source. Therefore, I will be inclined to be resourceful. And that's where we are headed today. So today's lesson we were talking about, and um, I know you can still hear me, so I'm just going to get this coffee so my, my brain can work good. So I know you can hear me, so stay right there. Mama B ain't gone nowhere. Some of us got some, a few habits, and uh, this one is mine. It ain't much, but um, got a habit to help me out. But we were talking about um, the fact that we are establishing in this book, Praying from the Third Dimension, we are establishing why. Somebody said, well, why do we keep talking about us? Because I came on this page to learn how to pray, you know, praying from the third dimension. Well, um... It's called the third dimension for a reason. And the reason why it's called the third dimension is because there is an expectation for you to go somewhere. There is an expectation for you to travel to a place. So you don't start out in the third dimension. You travel into that dimension until you um, understand that it's, it's, it's principles as to how you get there. And so the reason why we are spending time... Um, talking about you and me and me, I'm not exempt, um, talking about you and I, it's because that will be the biggest hindrance to you tapping that third dimension realm. It, it, it will not be other people. It will be how you deal with other people. Trust me, I know. I, oh my God, help me, Jesus. Trust me, I know. So, you don't want to get into that realm in prayer and then you start being affected. Your, your ability to travel in the spirit is affected by you. So what we want to do is we want to get out all the infections that we have so that we won't be a hindrance because if we are called to be intercessors, then we are called to be interceptors. Yeah, I was watching the football game um, last night, one of the foot college football games. And, um, yeah, I love football. I was watching the, uh, the college football game and um, how the guy threw a pass. Uh, uh, um, he threw a pass. And when he threw the pass, um, he was throwing it. And this guy was coming uh, and grabbed him when he went up in the air. But he kept his focus on the ball and he caught the ball. So when you when you when you are an interceptor, you have to put your body, you have to put your body and put your life in front of who you are praying for. And you are asking to take on that battle because you're strong enough to assist them in getting them to their deliverance and their healing. So a lot of people think prayer is cute. And that's why you see a lot of flyers up talking about, well, we're going to have in prayer. We have we having this and we having a midnight cry. We having this. No, this is serious. Because how many people are willing to put your life at stake for somebody else's life? That's right. You, you're willing to take the hits when you're interceding for people. One of my sisters who have a great, great uh, ministry in healing, Pastor Kathy Bynum, has a great healing in ministry and healing with cancer and stuff. And I've seen her literally take on sicknesses and become sick. And literally pass out and go into another zone for somebody else's life to be saved. So, you know, this is no joke. And so when we start talking about praying from the third dimension, we are the people now that have decided that we're going to move our posture of prayer from praying from the earth up to praying from heaven down. In other words, we're going into the God world. That's the third dimension. We're going into the God world so that we can get the mind of this God. 
and we can pull the mindset of God down into this earth realm. Are you hearing that? Are you hearing what he's saying? I'm just got to fix this a little bit. And so this is where this is where we are. And so when you start talking about praying from the third dimension, you are you are speaking from a place of movement where I have to move. Uh, my life has to move. I can no longer be uh, subjected to the way that I used to do things, the way that I, I used to respond to things. And the only way that I can do that is I have to have clarity. I'm talking about clear, clear, clear clarity about what God feels about me, not people, not people. I have to move away from the mindset of man and I have to develop this personal relationship with God, not religion. I'm going to read something to you. I have to develop this so that I'm able to move forward in life with the mindset from the God world. Did somebody just get that? Because it, it, it causes a, a, a stagnation when you're trying to move forward with a past mindset. It becomes difficult when you're trying to move in the spirit with a fleshly opinion. And so then that becomes contradictory to what you're trying to accomplish. And so then you're at the border of decision making that I must annihilate those opinions. And I must hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying from the God world about me. So when you look at that, I want to read something to you today. Today's lesson is really, 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 it's really, 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 really great. It says here, now we're going to, we're going to, we're going to pick this up from yesterday, but page 15, it says in Hebrews 7 and 11. Now, if perfection, a perfect fellowship. Between, I'm reading from the, for those of you that just joined in, I'm reading from, praying from the third dimension. If you haven't got your copy, get your copy. Now, if perfection, a perfect fellowship between God and the worshiper. Did anybody see between God and a person? It, it, is anybody else in between that? No. Okay. Let's settle that. Not, your worship ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. It's, it's you and God. Now, if perfection, a perfect fellowship between God and the worshiper had been attainable by Levitical priesthood. Perfect. Look at the word, not worship, not prayer, not praise, but perfect worship, perfect prayer, perfect praise. If this was attainable, are you hearing this? If they were talking about all of these things being perfect, if you were going to be perfect in prayer, perfect in praise, perfect in worship through the Levitical priesthood, if this was attainable by the Levitical priesthood for under it, the people were given the law. Why was it further necessary that there should arise another different kind of priest? One after the order of Melchizedek rather than one appointed after the order and rank of Aaron. So let me move that book to side to, to go to my scripture. So if the perfecting of who I am in God, if the perfecting perfection in who I am in God, in my praise, in my worship, in the way that I live was going to be accomplished by the law, by the religious establishment. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. God had to put something concrete in front of them so that they can be reminded that God was with them. But everybody couldn't come into that presence because watch this. It wasn't even because Aaron and Moses and all of them were perfect. It was because their clothes were perfect. Good Lord have mercy. Now, God, this is we, we, we way too early to be carrying on like this because that that just I just felt that. It was, it was the design and the structure of what they were covered with and the fact that they were required to take the sacrifices of a lamb and put it on their, their ear and, 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 and all of the places that God said to put it. It was, it was the ritualistic routine 
that God gave them, which was the mindset and the design and the wardrobe of God from heaven. And so what the Lord did was he clothed them with what would protect them in his presence. Oh, Lord. I got to drink some coffee on that one. Did you just hear that? He clothed them with what would protect them in his presence. They could not come into the divine presence in that third dimension, into that holies of holies without those items on. Because it was a wardrobe of protection. And so now everybody in the camp could not approach God like that. They had to be approached on behalf of by Aaron and the Levitical priesthood. So then what was happening in the camp? The people just kept going crazy. They kept stepping all outside of God because they didn't have a relationship with God. They had a priest. They had somebody else that they can make responsible to go in for them. Oh, my goodness. They had a priest that I want you to hear this. They had somebody who they had to dedicate the rest of their lives and their children's children had to wear all of these garments. 24-7. Are you hearing me? Wherever they would go throughout the city, they would know that they were the Levitical priesthood. Whenever you would see them, you would know that this was a Levitical priesthood because what he wore gave him permission to go in for other people and on behalf of other people in that divine presence. And so people didn't depend upon their own relationship. And that's why God had to keep coming to get them because their hearts were not attached to God. The rituals of what they believed would save them through the acts of another person. That's why religion would never work for nobody. That's why it is a failing system that is being nullified as I speak, because that will not be what God will use to deliver and push you and advance you and allow you to see his face in peace. It would be the relationship and it will not be the relationship of your pastor. It would not be the relationship of your favorite evangelist. It would not be the relationship of your mama, or your grandmama that prayed for you or your granddaddy, or your daddy. It would be your responsibility to have this newfound relationship because now I'm calling you to become a priest. I'm calling you to become the pastor of your soul. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are y'all hearing this? Are y'all hearing this? So he's saying, if, if that could make you perfect, then why did I need to do away with it? Then why, why did I need to do that? Why did I need to do that? Somebody said, well, you know, Dr. Bynum, you know, you carry the Ark of the Covenant around the country and da, 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 da. And, you know, and that and that was an old order. It's symbolism. It's a symbol of the first time God decided that he wanted to commune with the man. It's an honor to say, God, this is where we started and this is where we are right now. And now we all can come boldly in the presence, in the presence of what you created to represent you. For now, I stand in the midst of the Ark of the Covenant as a spiritual representation of the new order of God. Oh, yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. So he says here, watch this. He says here, now listen at this, listen at this, listen at this. Listen at this, please listen. So there must be a change, but how do we get there? How do we get there? The Bible said in Hebrews 5 and 11 concerning this, we, and they were talking about, I read it to you yesterday for time's sake. I read the, the seventh and the eighth and the ninth verse, and they were talking about um, uh, the completed experience in the Amplified Bible, making him perfectly equipped. He became the author and the source of eternal salvation. Then he said, being designated 
and recognized and saluted by God as high priest after the order with the rank of Melchizedek. Concerning this, we have much to say. Please listen at this reading. Please listen at the scripture. We have much to say, which is hard to explain since you have become dull in your spiritual hearing and sluggish, even slothful in achieving spiritual insight. Ooh, did I not say that yesterday? Did I not say that yesterday? Did I not say yesterday that day before yesterday? That was day before yesterday's word. Yeah, that was day before yesterday's word. When he talked about, if I can ever get y'all off the altar, if I can, if I, if I can ever get you beyond um, the elementary things that's in the first, first verse of the, of the sixth chapter, if I can ever get you beyond the elementary things, I'm trying to tell somebody in the earth realm, I'm trying to teach somebody, the Lord is saying, from a different depth, from a different realm, but... I, you, 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 you hard of hearing cause you can't, you can't hear me say stop clubbing. So, it, so your, 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 your spiritual hearing is dull. And how do I know your spiritual hearing is dull? Oh God. Oh God. How do I know your spiritual hearing is dull? Because you are slothful. You are slothful in discerning. You are slothful in meaning. You have to be analytical about everything. You don't know how to move in faith. You don't know how to move when God said move. You don't know that everything is connected to all of what God desires to do. And you don't know that when you delay in being obedient, you delay what God needs to do for you because there's so many other elements connected to it. He said, there are so many things that I want to tell you all. Juanita, there's so many things that I want to reveal to you all, but you too, you too dull. In your spiritual hearing. Oh my God. And God we repent. And we say we sorry. I know I am. I'm sorry. Because I want to know. I want to know. Because, because if I don't know. Then religion will hold me hostage. In a vicious cycle. Of every Sunday. Every Tuesday. Bible study. Rehearsal. Praise and worship rehearsal. If I don't find out. Then I'm going to feel like I'm being held captive by religion rather than relationship. That I will not have an ongoing experience to the point that, 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 that I am being illuminated by the revelation of God. I am learning how to move in this natural world in the spirit. And walk on the sidewalks of the natural concrete street as a dominating force. Oh my God, I, 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 I wish I had somebody on here today that really, really felt like hearing this. I wish I had somebody that, 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 that really felt like hearing this, that, 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 that you, we, we have to repent for, 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 for being dull in hearing. That's why the book, the Bible said in the book of Mark, it says in the book of Mark, it says, be careful what you are hearing because only the truth that you hear. Only the truth that you hear will be multiplied to you. So if you are lacking something and you're lacking things, it's because you don't have enough truth to produce that. And God is not a producer of lies. He would never let a lie be made manifest in your life. Who am I talking to right now? He would never let that which he did not originally intend to be your truth. For your life manifests itself in your life. He will keep intercepting. He, that's why the Bible said that we don't know what we should pray for as we ought. But the spirit of the Lord maketh intercession for us. In other words, the spirit of the Lord jumps in, catches the ball of the lie and shoots it down and runs it in the opposite direction. Put that in that camp because that can't be a touchdown in this camp. Because I have a responsibility as the spirit of God to intercept that which is trying to produce itself in your life as a lie. 
And so sometimes when we see that things are not, it, it just seems like every time I try to, then, then maybe you need to go back and check and see if that's the truth of the Lord, if that's his original intent for your life. Because he is the divine person that make manifest that which is true. And he said, not only that, the truth will be multiplied. Oh, God. Somebody hear that? Multiplication is the inevitable when it's the truth. Oh, my God. Somebody need to hashtag that. Multiplication is the inevitable when it is the truth. I'm sitting on this page now. Multiplication of people coming to this page is the inevitable when it's the truth. When it's the truth. It says here, it says here, you are, you are, you are dull in your spiritual hearing and sluggish, even slowful in achieving spiritual insight. Slow in achieving spiritual insight. What do I mean by that? Samuel, Samson, Samson was awesome in his gift. Samson was anointed by God. Samson was chosen by God. Samson had a call on his life to destroy the enemy. Samson had eyesight to see the enemy. But it wasn't until he lost his eyesight. That he said, Lord, if I can avenge myself for my two eyes, if I can do this work that you called me to do. And if I can, if I can make some sense out of the fact that I've lost my two eyes. But while he was in that dungeon blind, he didn't get his eyesight back, but he gained his insight back. And my insight is me being able to see the scope of what God is trying to do. The insight is me being able to understand that whatever is going on now is bigger than this and it's greater than this. The insight that I receive is my ability to discern the times, to know when is right timing, to know where I'm supposed to be and not be shaken by anybody's opinion. Not be concerned about anybody's opinion. My God from Zion, is anybody listening to this? Is anybody listening to this? It says here that we are slowful in achieving spiritual insight. God is sitting here using me, trying to take you someplace. But do you have insight to see that? Or are you just coming on the page and da, 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 da? No, everything, it counts for something. It counts for something. Hmm. Insight. God, God, because if I don't allow my eyes to be brought to spiritual precision, then I won't know how to see into the third dimension. Neither will I be able to see from that dimension. I won't be able to look at situations in the earth realm and determine that that has an expiration date to it and that's going to change. And God's going to turn that and God's going to fix that. And there's nothing too hard for God. And this situation, as ugly as it is, it's a setup for a miracle. And I'm going to stand here and I'm going to trust God no matter what I see. Because what I see with my sight in the natural, that's not what my insight is saying. And I am to walk with my insight and not by my eyesight. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Are you hearing that? Are you hearing this? We're supposed to be insight people, not just eyesight people. Oh, my God. So what did he say here? He said, for even though by the time you ought to be teachers and teaching others, you actually need someone to teach you over again the very first principles of God's word. You have come to need milk, not solid food, not solid food. Now, I'm going to let that sit right there for a second. Mm -mm, I got to drink some coffee on that one. And that's to everybody. When I say tag somebody and, and, and tag somebody on this video, minister to somebody on this video. 
Well, I don't feel like it. Well, I don't, I, I don't feel like reposting this video on my page. I don't feel like tagging nobody. Mm -mm. Because when you need to be teaching and reaching, you sitting here talking about giving me milk. When this is not a milk page, wrong page, we don't teach milk. I don't have none. This is the meat of the word. This is a different level of food. This is for mature people. This is for people to understand that I'm walking with a purpose and I'm coming to this page to get my insight into a level of precision so that I can operate above my circumstance and not just through my circumstance. What did I just say to somebody? Tap that screen with some hearts if you said, now that right there was to me, mother. That right there was to me. Mmm. Grabbers are babies. Toddlers. Infants always crying for some milk. I can remember the days. I really can. I can remember the days growing up. I think I was maybe about three, four years old. Learning how to tie my shoes. Ooh, I would get so mad when my mother tried to help me. Let me help you. I can do it. I can do it. The bunny ear over here and the bunny over here and twist it around. I can do it. I can do it. And, it. and you know what? When they bought me them top shoes, I would be walking down the street sometime looking down at my feet. Because I'd be hoping that my shoe come untied. Just so I can get down there and tie it again. Because when you start maturing, you don't want your mama to help you. I can tie my own shoe. Just, just let, me, let me do it. You can't hardly wait. For the next challenge because it's like let me do it you can't hardly wait to be a blessing to somebody else let me do it but it's the baby that keeps throwing their foot up tie my shoe mama it's the person that don't want to mature that throw their head back you know <laughs> one of my little nephews used to used to do the number two on this stuff and said, I boo-boo. Now, if you can say I boo-boo, you can say I got to use the bathroom. I ain't hear nobody talk to me. I ain't hear nobody say nothing. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. You can't walk in divine miracles. You, can, you can't walk in a house that you don't have enough credit for, that you don't have a down payment for. You can't walk in the level of divine expectation where things materialize outside of the normal means if you still need milk. Because milk people, you, 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 you. Okay, let's just face the facts. Let's just face the facts. Let's just face the facts. Some people on this page don't make enough money for what God has promised them. Some people it's going to be favor as to how you're going to get it. So if you still need milk, then what you're saying to God is you still need normal means to get it, which means, my friend, you will never get it because you don't have the means to get it. You don't have the credit to get it. You don't have the cash to get it and you don't have the favor to get it. OK, who am I talking to? Who am I talking to right now? Who am I talking to right now, if anybody? Because here it goes now. For everyone. He not partial. For everyone who continues to feed on milk is obviously inexperienced and unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness, of conformity to the divine will in purpose, thought, and action. That's way too much for me to teach right there. Oh, God. Oh, God. If you continue to want milk, then what you're proving is that you are unskilled in the doctrine of in the doctrine of righteousness, in the belief system of how I am made righteous. I am inexperienced in the belief system of how I'm made righteous. So therefore my righteousness is connected to my religion. 
My righteousness is connected to my favorite preacher. My righteousness is connected to my Christian structure. My right, I'm not skilled in righteousness. So my righteousness is from another level and it's connected to people. And that's why when people do certain things, many of y'all die because it's almost like that's your God. When people are not your God, ministries are not your God. They human just like you. They stink just like you. They have to shower just like you. They still in the human body. They will make mistakes. We were error because we are human. We are on the same journey. And when you desire milk, you desire people. When you desire milk, you don't desire God. You desire people. And when your righteousness is connected to people and a system and religion, you are destined to fail. Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? I'm unskilled in righteousness. I'm unskilled in the doctrine of righteousness because the true doctrine of righteousness is my relationship to God. It's my love and my appreciation and my reverence to him. And because I reverence him, I don't do wrong. Because I reverence him, I respect his wishes over my life. I respect the fact that he wants me to live differently and it pleases him when I conduct myself in a manner that pleases him. Oh my God. Only people that eat meat understand that. People that drink milk depends on a sloppy agape. And they live their life forever with bloops, bleats, and blunders. They don't ever get past Hebrews, the sixth chapter in the first verse. They got to always keep going over and over and over and over and over the same thing again. You don't have to tap the screen today. But he says that you are inexperienced and unskilled in doc in the doctrine of righteousness of conformity. Y'all working me too hard today. For real, for real, for real. For real, for real, for real, for real, for real, for real. Oh, Jesus. I want you to hear something. I want you to hear this. It says here, Lord God, help us, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. To comply to the standards and the rules or watch this, watch this, or the laws. Law, there are laws in the natural, but there are laws in the spirit. There are laws in the natural, but there are laws in the spirit. It says to behave according to socially acceptable conventions or standards. Watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? Are you hearing this? So we have to understand the laws of the spirit. The laws in the natural is a lot of don't wear that. Don't wear this. Put that down. Don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't go here. Don't go there. The laws of the spirit. Is love the Lord with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy strength. The laws of the spirit are much simpler. And they're much shorter. Because though short, they contain power. Don't put on a certain color lipstick. Don't it don't contain no power. Because that's only talking to you. Because everybody ain't going to do that no way. Don't wear your hair like that. That's a law that does not contain power. Love the Lord with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength. Is me finding out what it takes to love him. Oh my God, Jesus, have mercy, Lord. You know, I, I had this experience once just kind of coming up in the church. And, um, you know, I was around a certain group and they was like, you, I ain't, women ain't supposed to wear no pants and women ain't supposed to do this and women ain't supposed to do this. 
And these one particular set of people, they was riding me hard. So, you know, you, sometimes you just consider as the one that just need to be saved because you wear makeup and you, you know, you, you, you wear pants and God ain't finished with you yet and all of that craziness. And then 20 years passed by, a lot of those people died. And now I'm seeing some of the same people that told me it was a sin to wear pants. They wear pants now. Do you see what I mean? Don't try to make up your convictions other people's convictions. If God told you not to do something, he's talking to you. If the Lord convicted you about something, he's talking to you. I don't hear nobody tapping that screen right there. God knows everybody. He knows where everybody lives. He knows where everybody lives in their heart. He knows everybody's diet. He knows who's on milk. He knows who's on meat. He knows what to say to whom when it's time for them to go to their next level. He knows what he is required out of individuals. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me right there. Who am I talking to? So because he's convicted me about wearing tight jeans and, 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 and having my, 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 my rear end out without putting a blouse on that cover my rear end or wearing a jacket that cover, I can't be talking about that. And y'all ain't got no big, he talking to me. And the reason why he can say that to me, because I eat meat, I don't drink milk. Oh, my God. If we put as much emphasis on the laws of religion like we do the laws of the spirit, we would see people change 40 going north and backwards. People would be doing 365 degree pirouettes in the middle of their lifespan. If we can just get people to love God with all their heart and with all their might and with all their strength. Because love will make you do some crazy things. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Love will make you stay with your baby daddy beating you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Love will make you go out and buy your kids some $100 tennis shoes and y'all don't even have dinner. No, love will make you do some things. So he said, if I can get you to love me, then I know you'll be crazy about me. And I know there'll be some things that you'll do for me that other people will look at and shake their head and say, I don't even know how she's doing that. I don't even watch. Yeah, there's probably people that, 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 that's, that's up in my caliber of ministry saying, well, why is Dr. Bynum sitting on Facebook? Because I love him. That's why I'm here. Well, why is she sitting on Facebook? And why is she sitting on TV? And why is she sitting there just talking to people and just, just ministering to people? And, and half of the people ain't even from the church. Because I love him. Because that's the kind of crazy stuff he'll make you do when you fall in love with him. When you're in love with him, he's like, what you want? Y'all know how y'all do. Y'all, you know how we do. Women crazy like that. You sit up and take care of a man and he ain't got no job and, you know, just, I love it. I love it. Y'all is not saying, you are not tapping that screen right now. You are not tapping that screen right now. You'll go shopping and buy him clothes. You'll go out to dinner every time and you pay the bill. You work and teach two jobs and he don't work nothing because you love it. You keep on having babies and don't even know how, how y'all going to pay for it. Because you love him. Why can't we act the fool like that? Because we love God. Why can't we do stuff that don't make no sense? Because we love the Lord. He said, because if I can get you to love me. Then I can get some productivity out of you. If I can get you to love me. Watch this. Then I can get your sacrifice. I can't get your sacrifice until I get you to love me. Because if I ask you to sacrifice and you don't love me, you'll complain the whole time you're sacrificing. Well, I don't know why I got to leave prayer again. I'm just tired. I, I, don't, I don't know why I got to be on Facebook again because I'm just, I'm, I'm just tired. And I just got to go here and preach again. And I, No, you committed to it. You said you wanted to do it. You said, oh, God, every Wednesday night I'll be there. Now all of a sudden you all mad and all complaining and frustrated. Because it wasn't out of love. You can't put sacrifice before the love. Or you won't be consistent in what you're being asked to do. Am I ministering to anybody? Who am I talking to? Who am I talking to? So we think we can go around just, and that's why he said it, it bulls and goats and all of that. Could, the, the, listen, the sacrifice can't make you perfect. The sacrifice can't make you perfect. But the love can. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He said, but solid food is for full grown men. 
for those whose senses and mental faculties are trained by practice to discriminate and distinguish between what is morally good and noble and what is evil and contrary either to divine or human law. Oh God, food, food, not milk, the meat of the word is what helps you. It's what gives you the power when your senses and your mental faculties are trained by practice. I'm training my mind to think divine by practicing that. I'm training myself to operate in obedience because I practice that. Oh, God. This is something. This is something. This is something. I have to practice being mentally equipped. I have to, I have to practice saying yes to God. I have to practice doing stuff that I'm hearing the Lord tell me to do. And even though I don't feel like doing, that's what I've been talking about. When I, when I say tag somebody, share this, follow me on Facebook. Uh, all of that is an authority that's asking you to do something. That you say, I'll do it when I feel like it. Or you say, I'm not going to do that. But you will come religiously and listen to the teachings every day and won't do anything that you're being asked to do. We can't follow God if we can't follow his leader. When you know they're being led. All of these are little things that we're practicing. I'm practicing. Oh my God, I'm training my mind to come out of a rebellious and a stubborn and a self-willed position. I'm training my mind to do the will of the Father. I'm training my mind to be willed, to be willed, to be told what is in store for me. I'm training my mind to be able to follow what God has in store for me. And I can't do that. If I operate in rebellion sometime, I can't do that. Some of you on this page that say, oh, pray for my children. No, your children don't need prayer. They need your obedience. Because the Bible said that after your obedience is fulfilled, then you can cause somebody else to obey you. But if you're disobedient, if your spirit is not willed, if your spirit can't be broken, if your spirit can't be led, then a spirit that is rebelling against God can't bring a child into divine obedience. Because obedience in this hour for children, it is a divine thing. Because the demonic forces are so much after families, so much after marriages, so much after your children, so much after your nieces and your nephews. They will never hear you. They can't hear you. Because the voice that is speaking to them is a voice of witchcraft. And the this generation do not want to be controlled by an off spirit. They will only yield to God. So when you are in rebellion, when you are in disobedience to God, if God speaks to you in a Sunday morning service and said, walk over there and put $20 in that lady's hand. Every time you rebel. You increase your power of witchcraft, which means you lose your power of spiritual authority and you can't call anything into correction. Not your finances, not your children, not your boss who going crazy on you, not your enemies. Oh God, I love you, Jesus. You can't call a house. You can't call a car. You can't even enter into that divine realm. You cannot go to the third dimension because the third dimension is wielded by the father. And everything that sits up there knows that it is not of itself, but it is of God. The angels are messengers of God. They become the voice of God. They are not of themselves. They are designs and implements that God has used to dispatch his voice wherever he wants to take it. 
And this is what we ought to be. That's what the Bible says. Who is man that God is mindful of him? You don't know who you are. You are that being that the Lord has created to dispatch his will into the earth realm. To dispatch what he desired into this society. But he can't get us out of milk. He can't get us out of rebellion. He can't get us to will ourselves to be obedient and to ask for an obedient spirit so that I can train my mind to obey him. You better tap that screen if I'm talking to somebody because I'm telling you, y'all pulling some virtue out of me today. You pulling some virtue out of me today. I guarantee you. My God from Zion, if you would just adhere to what God is saying, I guarantee you in less than seven days, you will see a change in your children. In less than seven days, you will see a change in your marriage because you lose your commanding power when you walk in rebellion because the devil can't cast the devil out. Witchcraft can't bind witchcraft. We think witchcraft is a witch with a black hat on. We think witchcraft is a witch that's flying around on a broom. We think witchcraft is the voodoo dolls and voodoo juice and people that come from Africa and people that, 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 that offer sacrifices. No, the most cruelest and the deadliest form of witchcraft is the witchcraft of disobedience. Because the Bible said disobedience is, is the form of witchcraft. It's iniquity. It's me rebelling against God. It's God telling me to do something. But I'm saying, no, I'm not. That's what you look like in the spirit. Every time God said, do this, I'm not. Every time I said, God, God, said, God said, come here, I'm, I'm not coming. Every time God said, get on your knees and pray, I'm, I'm not going to pray. I don't want to. And I remember, I remember, I remember when I was a child. And my mother, my mother began to train me. And I, 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 rem I, I, can, I can still remember that. And she would say, come here. And I wouldn't come. And my mother would snatch me and beat the living snot out of me. And my aunts and everybody was like, well, why are you hitting her so hard? And why are you whooping her like that? Because so, I, when I tell her to come here, I mean come here. And so I still didn't get it. I still didn't get it. And she would say, come here. And I'd be doing what I want. And sometimes she would call me to her and I would run from her. And she would grab me and whip me. And I could not understand why she keep whooping me. Because I just don't want to come. And one day, we were crossing the street. And a big old truck passed by. And I jumped back and she said, you see how fast that truck went by? I said, yes, ma'am. She said, when I'm calling you to me, you don't know the danger that's coming down the street, Juanita. And the very time that you tell me you're not coming, you can be walking into a danger where you're getting ready to get hit by a car. But when you get used to rebelling against me telling you to come, then you won't come when it's at a point that I want to save your life. And somebody better tap some hearts on that screen and say, God is talking to me. I'm not saying another word until I see all hearts. I don't want to see a thumb up. I want to see hearts. I don't want to see a smile. I don't want to see a oh my God face. I want to see all hearts because we have got to get this. We have got to understand the seriousness of where we are when God is talking about divine obedience and training yourself and starting to eat meat and come off of that milk because milk gives you permission to rebel. Milk says, oh, I made a mistake. Oh, he told me to do that. And I didn't do everything God told me to do. Well, you know what? I was a little disobedient and we think that stuff is cute, but a little disobedience is a whole lot of witchcraft. And I want you to remember that a little disobedience is an open door for the spirit of witchcraft to enter into your house. And then when everybody start acting crazy, you don't know what's going on. When finances is going crazy, when your kids is going crazy, when you can't get no peace, when you waking up in the middle of the night, when your job is threatening to shut down, everything start acting crazy. The gas company is overcharging you, shutting your lights off and, and they done made a mistake and it's taking them two days. All that dumb stuff, all that crazy stuff that start happening, that stuff happens. Oh my God. How does it get in it finds your hook of disobedience and it rides in and the reason why it doesn't leave because it has permission to stay there because anything that is sin is grounds for the enemy to have authority and you cannot rebuke that you have to repent so God can turn that around you can't rebuke that that has permission to be there 
Your rebellion gave it permission to be there. Your disobedience to God gave it permission to be there. Oh, my God. Whew. Shut it down. Shut it down. Shut that thing down out of your life. Shut that down out of your life. Think about what I'm saying to you today. Think about that. Think about the tuitions that can be paid. Think about the college doors that can open for your children and you ain't got no money. Think about the raise that you can get. Think about the position that will be created when they find everybody else and they create one and keep you. Think about the favor that is awaiting you. When you pick up a spoon, when you pick up a spoon, not a fork, a fork caused you to pick through what you want to hear God say. A spoon said, I'm scooping this up and this is going down my throat because I am going to eat meat. I'm coming off of milk. Put the straw down. Put the baby sippy down. Come out of the dairy department. And come over into the meat of the word so that everything about your life can change. Obey him. I was in the place the other night, last night eating. <laughs> and I was eating some crabs and the man said, how do you want your crabs? I said, I want, I want obey seasoning. I know this, this, is, this is hilarious. I said, I want obey season. So the man comes back out. The, 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 the manager comes back over. He said, we don't really usually prepare it like that. We prepare it with garlic and we prepare it with butter. And I said, well, I've been coming here for six nights. I said, the man, he prepares it with obey season. He said, oh, we got that back there. You want that? I said, yes. So he goes back there. He comes back again. So you sure you don't want no, no butter or nothing? You sure you don't want no garlic? I said, no, I want obey season. And then I turned around the flash and said, if you just obey me. I can give what I need. And all the waitresses are standing around. Everybody just busted out laughing. He had to laugh himself. I said, just obey me. I want obey seasoning. If you just obey me, I can get what I want. If you just obey God, you can get what you want. No good thing would he withhold from him that walketh. Up right before him. And how do I walk up right before him? Because I am obedient to him. And how do I practice obedience? I eat the meat of the word. And why do I eat the meat of the word? Why do I sacrifice? Because I love him. Because I love him. Not because of religion. But because I love him. You know what? I know this is funny and it don't make no sense. But I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to see how many of y'all going to be obedient. I want you to go out today and buy a bottle of Obey seasoning. Ain't nobody going to know what it's about. Buy a bottle of Obey seasoning and don't open it. Buy a little small shaker bottle of Obey seasoning. And put that down in your purse. Carry that in your purse for seven days. I don't know why I'm feeling late to tell you to do this. And every time you go in your purse, you're going to see that bottle down there and say, Obey seasoning. Obey seasoning. Mm -hmm. Leave it in your purse. Leave it in the spot where the enemy is trying to attack the most. Obey seasoning. Because if I obey God, my children going to obey me. If I obey God, then my husband going to obey God concerning me. If I obey God, then the wealth of the wicked that's laid up for the just, to the sinner man he gives him to store it up that he may take it from him and give it to those that please God. And how do I please God? I obey him. When I go in my purse and I see that obey season, so okay, God, what do you want me to do? Because I'm not getting ready to rebel against you no more. I'm getting ready to obey you. And this right here is a symbolism. This job seasoning right here sitting down in my purse, sitting on my desk at work, sitting in the kitchen on the table, on the counter is my reminder. That if I don't obey you. Then I can't cause anything to obey me. For he says. But solid food is for full grown men. For those whose senses and mental faculties are trained by practice to discriminate 
and distinguish between what is morally good and noble and what is evil and contrary either to divine or human law. And I am receiving the ability and the insight and the discernment to be able to know what is going and moving contrary to what God has promised me. And I'm able to rebuke that because I have obeyed him. And therefore, according to the book of Hebrews, he has given me authority to do so. I have authority over that thing now because my obedience is complete in him. Then I can speak for him and I can command those things which be not as though they were. And they will be made manifest. They will be made manifest. God bless you. Don't forget. Get your copy of Praying from the Third Dimension.